Ready? Yeah. I am Dr. Izzy Bogus with What's the Matter University in Buckstorp, Mississippi. We are here today to discuss the Battle of Gettysburg fought July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 1863, a travesty to Southern independence. We will be discussing Robert E. Lee's choice not to use perhaps his most powerful weapon in a gambit to crush the Union Army. Let us go explore that gambit. What we have done here in my assistant Dr. Lincolnstein's laboratory is set up a historically accurate depiction of the third day of Battle Gettysburg. No expense has been spared for the historical accuracy of this simulation. Let's go to the map. Here on the third day we have Dick Yule's corps on the Union right. Just below Corpse Hill. Yule's troops stretch over to here to AP Hill facing Cemetery Ridge. Little known fact, Jeb Stewart was not missing on the third day beginning of the battle. He was indeed indisposed. Move to Lee Center, opposite of Cemetery Hill, on Long Street, on Lee's right, opposite of Little Round Top. The second day of the battle, Long Street attempted to turn Meade's army by going through Little Round Top and he was repulsed. Brings us to the third day of the battle where Lee chose to charge the middle of Meade's army and was repulsed, ending any chance for victory. Lee, however, kept something back. His most powerful weapon, a flanking movement. If he had utilized this flanking movement, he would have swept Meade's army from the battlefield marched out Washington and secured our independence. What was that flanking movement? And what troops were he using? We will demonstrate. Oh. Robert E. Lee had in his possession giant attack weasels that he failed to use. Unleash the weasels. Go. Oh, oh, to the sides. Unfortunately, as you can see, weasels have no loyalty. They are now decimating Lee's troops. Oh, he's just eaten. George Pickett. <laughs> this is what I mean. He's cleaning up Ru Meade's army. Oh, oh, it's a travesty. Oh. This one devours his own horsemen. Oh my god! Oh! Oh, he goes back and eats Robert E. Lee. <laughs> Perhaps Lee's gambit was not as well thought out as I thought. They are quite effective, though. Flank is crushed. However, so is Robert E. Lee, as he is also devoured and half his army destroyed. My God, one of them is under the battlefield.
Oh, oh, oh. This is brutal. He's got an underground cave system in the garden. Get his bug aquified. Attack weasel has crushed the bloody angle, driving all the way back into Meade's reserves. Oh, they are crushing everything in their path. Oh, this is just brutal. Force there will be nothing left for either army to do anything afterwards. want a giant weasel chasing me on the battlefield. <laughs> I would have to expect this is not what General Lee thought. His weasels destroy his entire army. Oh, now he's just eating everything. Ugh. longer can this destruction go on? <coughs> In summarizing this horrible, horrible event, we have to realize that Robert Lee, Robert e. Lee was correct in not unleashing the giant monster weasels on the Union Army. It decimated his army and resulted in his own demise as they devoured him in his own headquarters. Oh, tragedy, tragedy, tragedy. The war for Southern Independence was lost Regardless, this is a somber, somber, sad day for the South. I am at a loss for words. Thank you for joining us tonight.